Hey guys, I'm Jason D'Souza. I'm the guitarist and backup vocalist for Modern Mafia, and you guys are watching Rhythm Nation TV. I've always been introduced to music as a child, you know, I've been introduced to bands like Crosby, Stills and Nash, I've been introduced to bands like The Eagles, The Beatles, and um, I've always loved music as, you know, a thing, you know, and I've always loved playing instruments as well, you know, Ac academically not the best, but um, my mom pushed me to study the piano for a while and then I tried to pursue the violin and the drums as well. but. Eventually, the guitar was something that always has, it's always caught my attention. For me, I looked at it as something with six strings that you can do so much with. I used to watch a lot of the Beatles shows and just see John Lennon and just watch him with the guitar. You know, Kurt Cobain was actually a like one of the first people who actually saw play the guitar and just, you know, from the way he was strumming to the fact that he was even left-handed put a big toll on me because I was very young at this time, you know. But I could safely say that he is someone who inspired me to actually pick up and make the guitar an instrument and not just a layer in the background because that's what he did. He made the guitar his instrument. For me personally, I would say Jack White. That guy has got such a different approach towards guitar. He definitely has a different sound and it's something quite, it's, I've not heard of anything like that, you know. He started off with uh, like the upholsters and then he went on to the white stripes and just his whole take on the guitar was something that just keeps inspiring me all the time. A song specifically would probably, it's a song that always gets my hair standing by them which is called Icky Thumb because it's got such a sweet guitar lick and it's so, um, the reason that guitar riff is so important to me it's because it is supporting the entire song. It is just drums and it's just guitar, you know, in the recording and when they do play it live. It is that guitar riff that is supporting the entire act at that point. I have, uh, there's this guy named Gary Clark Jr. who I've been watching, who I've been listening to off late, but I've had the chance to see Buddy Guy live and just to see him play his guitar and he, he, he doesn't even look at the fretboard when he plays, you know. And then, of course, you know, I'm a huge Keith Richards fan when he teaches, you know, the five string technique, you know, you not snap that top string off and you tune. It's all these things keep, there's so many of them, you know, but Again, Gary, in terms of blues, Gary Clark Jr., again, his take on blues, you know, he has this very fuzzy take on it, you know, blues is a dirtyish kind of sound, but he kind of takes it to the next level. Robert Johnson, I just watched, um, Recently, I just uh, saw that movie Crossroads, which was based on the whole legacy of Robert Johnson and the whole folklore behind him is fascinating as hell, you know. And uh, it starts off with him singing one of his songs and my hair stood almost instantly. Just back then, it was literally him and a guitar and there was no band behind him, there was nothing and they recorded it straight, pressed it onto a vinyl. That's that the scene in that movie. I know it was like reenacted and stuff, but still like gets my hair standing every time. I personally started off with covers. You know, I'd listen. I'd listen to so many bands, and the the main thing that I always thought about was how do they get the sound out? You know, and the music that I listen to is like the genres are so vast. You know, Wes Ballin from Limp Bizkit. You know, I can I can remember me sitting down and wondering how did he get that guitar to sound the way it did. Following the creative process, of course, comes with the riff. I'm always sitting with my guitar and I'm always playing something. You know, and the moment something. The moment I play something that clicks, 
it's when I lock that down, you know, and it's usually on an acoustic guitar, you know. I am an electric guitarist, but I have my acoustic guitar with me all the time and I'm just constantly playing between riffs or chords. It doesn't have to be something complex, but it has to be something catchy, you know, that catches the people, you know. So it could be something like a Dexter Holland riff or it could be something like the Hives where they just play chords in a really well-placed manner, you know, and just catches people's attention. I always have my phone handy. Every time I think about something, I'll definitely press a record button and play. You know, and I'll just play so that it's because I forget riffs all the time. I'm always, I'm always riffing out. You know, I'm always even when I have my electric guitar set up, I'm pressing on pedals. You know, effects units play a big role with me as well. You know, so if I find something that has caught my attention that has potential, my phone's out. I record the thing and it's done. That is the first step to the song. I have studied the guitar, I, uh, not too much. I really need to study more, but I have, I did two years of Spanish guitar and two years of like rock guitar, you know, like I studied in rock school for a bit and then I just stopped because um, for me, I wanted to spend more time in the creative process, but I'm right now understand, like I know what my limitations are and now I want to expand, you know, so yeah. Studying is, has been important for me. To break it down, I used to listen to so many, two artists that I used to listen to simultaneously were Jet and Alice in Chains, you know. And the way they, like uh, Jet was a very, so for Jet, I love Jet so much, especially their first album because the sound of, you know, a Gretsch going through a Vox AC30 for me was what sound was supposed to be. It, it was such a beautiful sounding record. The songs were simple, you know. And then Jerry Cantrell using his Fender Strat going through you know, his Mesa Boogie amp, you know, that different style and yet it did not sound anything like any other band who used the same uh, equipment, you know, it's just the way he played it, you know, so it's people like them that inspire me all the time when I am writing music, you know. I'm a fan of distortion but I'm also a fan of strumming and playing chords, not just power stuff, you know. I do use a computer a lot, but that's only if I'm writing something, you know, like if, if I'm write, if I'm the writing process and I do not really want to plug my guitar into my amp and then have my entire chain of pedals out there, then I'll just plug it straight into my computer and use the emulations out there. But that's literally what I use it for, you know. Otherwise, it's for me, I'm, m me being a guitarist, I do not, if I'm ever going, if I'm ever part of a record, I will insist even live that they mic my amp up because the sound is much different compared to when you just plug it in, you know, and the pod, not the pod, sorry, the uh, axe effects and stuff, not to put them down, it, I've never felt something sound as close to as when you mic up an amp. That is the main thing for me. Education, of course, you know, and you need to know what's happening and at the same time you need to listen to all the music you can, you know, and in the words of Joe Walsh from the, from the Eagles, you know, if you want to really be a good guitarist, learn each and every Beatles song. That would be the best advice.